Hello again, my lovely little lemon drops. I'm going to teach you how to fix a tear or a hole in any garment with first a sewing machine, or if you don't have a sewing machine, do it by hand. Let's do this. Okay, what you'll need for this is a garment with a hole or a rip, a pair of snips, a little scissors, and most importantly, interfacing. Interfacing is a material that can be made out of cotton or polyester, but the point of it is that it is kind of a mesh fabric, very thin, that has little dots of glue on one side so that when you press it into a fabric, it sort of glues itself to the fabric. It's not permanent, uh, but it does tend to last through the wash if you play your cards right. So uh, you can get this online. I will link to uh, on I will link to Amazon, but you can also go to Joann or any craft store. They usually have this. Uh, just ask somebody for help. Just ask for interfacing. Um, it really doesn't matter what kind you get, just, just get the cheapest. For the next step, you'll want to turn it, the part of the garment that has the rip inside out and cut a piece of your interfacing that is bigger than your hole, but not, that, not too much bigger, be pretty, be pretty reasonable. And be mindful of seams, you can't really cover seams because then you'll, you'll hold them down. So just go right up against a seam like this if you have that. It's not a big, it's not a huge issue, but it will help with your ability to move later. Grab another piece of light fabric, it could be a tablecloth or a napkin or something like that, and a spray bottle of water if you've got it. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. And uh, let your iron heat up to a medium-high setting. Uh, you don't want to melt or damage your fabric, so definitely be aware of that what kind of fabric you have just just go medium high and you should be fine for most fabrics spray water as much as you want it's not gonna hurt either way um, on on there make sure it's it's nice and wet and then put your scrap fabric on top and use your iron to press it out initially take a look and make sure that you're happy that it didn't get like bunched up or you're happy where it ended up so I got that all and you can you can tap real quick with this it's not a big deal it's just like could get stuck to your iron and make your iron dirty we don't want that do it proper right okay so that, now it's ready to be pressed so press is much as you can or much as your table or whatever area you're doing this on will allow and count to 10 hippopotamuses one hippopotamus two hippopotamus three hippopotamus nine hippopotamus ten okay and check on it it looks pretty good so what we did there is we just see it might have glued itself to the other side so let's Pull it apart a little bit there. Okay. So what we did there is like returned the integrity to the fabric. Sorry, this is so dirty, but this is like my most prized uh, garment, and it's seen better days. Uh, yeah. So now the integrity is back. If you want, you can patch with a piece of fabric on this side. That's up to you, but I don't recommend that. It's uh, you can fix this however you want. Okay. There's no rules. There's no hole fixing police and there's no proper way to do this they once you there's a hole in a garment they say the garment is gone broken forever not with your time don't play with it no more but, that, but that's stupid right we want to fix our garments and live you know with them for maybe our whole lives if we can this is um maybe on the larger end of a hole that i would recommend hand sewing it, it could be done uh but i would more recommend using a sewing machine most sewing, home sewing machines will have a zigzag function, and that's what I recommend you using for this, which I'll show you real quick. But if you don't, and you only have a straight stitch, I will show you how to do that on this one. 
Okay, so if you have a home sewing machine, set it to the zigzag function, and I have mine set to the width of five millimeter, but you have to make the decision based on the hole that you are patching. Try it out on another piece first, on a scrap piece first, and uh, if you like it, proceed. So this is a, a cuff, and it's kind of hard to get it get to, so keep it inside out, and pull the right side out because that's the side you want to be sewing from and just this is called sewing in a tunnel to sew inside it like that so but just pop that underneath there try to lay it as flat as you can okay so you see the hole starts about there so I'm gonna pull it down this is black so you'll definitely see what work I've done and then just sew down Sew down across. The hole and just keep going back and forth until you have sewn it closed. So as you can see, I've zigzagged across this hole. And here's the back of it, so you can see what we did on this side. But you see how this interfacing has given it the integrity, so it's not just pulling on more weak, loose fibers along the sides here and just will open up again. It's, it's really important. But you, if you see there's like a little bit of a hole right there, you can go back over this again, just even with wider stitches or however you want. You can make it as tight as or as wide as you want with the, the stitch width, width. And you can get artistic with it if you want or pick, like if, it, if I wanted this to not show, I just pick like a pink thread that sort of matched this, maybe even just white if I didn't have a pink thread and that hole would be closed up and it would look really nice. You almost wouldn't be able to see it if it was pink. Now, if you do not have a zigzag function, do not worry. You can still fix your garment with your machine. You just have to use your back tuck a lot. And it might be a little more labor intensive, but that is okay. We will be able to do it. So, if you can, now this is what's tricky, is you gotta get this flat, and that's why the interfacing helps keep everything in place as well. Get it as flat as you can with your fingers, with one hand, yep. set it up with both hands, and then leave it with one hand, because you're going to need to use your back tack over here. I've got one right here, it's a little easier, so I'm going to do that. Lower your presser foot. So if you are very nimble and practiced at this, you can get those tight uh, zigzag stitches like the uh, a home machine was doing over there, but it's not likely. So, the, and this is what I would recommend, the technique I would recommend for big gaping holes that are like this. I mean, if you have a hole this big, you're definitely gonna need a piece of fabric more than just the interfacing, but I would recommend both. Put a piece of fabric, then a piece of interfacing, so that the interfacing holds the, the piece of the patch fabric in. And then just do this across any hole or rip, anything you've got, just go, back and forth, giant, giant zigzag stitches. Now I did a really quick and dirty one so that you can see what that looks like. But the more you do this over and over and layer and layer and layer, the stronger the fat, you're basically weaving new fabric there. You're just doing it with the machine more than enough fixed so I'm not going to continue but feel free to get artistic you know you could even like make a shape a heart a star or something and then keep it as you know draw it on the outside and use it as a guide you know make it your own if you're gonna put the love and work into fixing a garment you might as well make it look like you wanted to express yourself you know? okay so next we'll talk about how to hand sew so here we are again, I tore a hole.
hole in this so that it would be a little bit more like uh, trauma to the, the garment. There's a little bit of, you know, wrinkling. So, do the same thing. Turn it to the inside, whatever side that is. And get a little interfacing patch for it. down for 10 seconds. Oh, double check that it's, oopsie, I mean, you can go ahead and encourage it to do what you want right there, right on there, like that. And it looks good, so one hip for pond, two hip for pond, Facing on one side, and then we'll hand sew it back together. Okay, for hand sewing, you'll need a needle, thread, and a pair of scissors. Thread your needle by doing about an arm span amount of thread. Cut an, um, an arm span amount of thread. Be careful when you cut the end, make it nice and crisp so that you have a nice end to thread your needle with. Thread your needle. Pull it all the way through until you get, until the ends meet. Until they're close enough, they're close enough. And then, just do a normal knot. Hold it in your hands like this. Don't let go. Hold it, hold it between your fingers and don't let go. And then when you tie the knot, go like that. Don't let go. And then do it again until, do it until about two knots sit on top of each other. Clip the ends right on the other side of the knot. And if you are in a pinch and you don't have thread or anything, but you can, you do have an iron and you uh, have access to this stuff or you want to keep it around the house, this is a pretty good, this does a pretty good job all by itself. I can't guarantee that it's going to hold forever or anything like that. It might get worn out with regular wear with the wash there's nothing holding it on except for that little bit of glue that you melted in there um, again if you peel this off it's not gonna there's not gonna be any consequence the glue doesn't stick around there's no residue uh, if you mess up you can just pull it off try again but if you can do a little bit of um, whip stitching I think that's what this is called um, but if you can let's do a little bit of sewing so hand sewing so the don't 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 feel like you need to do anything too special here. Just come from the wrong side and poke through. You see how close I am. It's a little bit past. So we're doing a, like an L shape, a backwards L shape. And you know, do a little bit above the where the rib starts. I'm doing this in a contrasty red red. I mean contrast white on the red so you can see it. And then sew across like that. poke through just a little bit and you know don't go right next to the tear go a little bit farther away because you're just trying to like keep the fabric from pulling apart and ripping again Right, you're just trying to give it like extra support. It's like a like a little corset for your tear. And I am not great at hand sewing. I don't do a beautiful, pretty job because I don't have enough practice. It's all just practice. But
got a little close there. I want to back out a little bit. All right. So I feel like I'm pretty much to the end of this side, right? corner here go back to the same hole that's on the inside of the last stitch of the corner and then if, if this happens this is the two threads are not the same length so uh, fix that and then pull pull your thread out with your arm so that it so pinch it with your finger here so that you don't pull on this but pull with the other end so that you can straighten those threads back out. I still don't feel good about that. There we go. Okay. And do it one more time because the corner is still, I'm still going around the corner here. And it doesn't have to be the exact same hole, just like really, just near it. I did not fix that bad hole. There we go. And carry on. So, so this technique is purely about integrity and keeping your garment from ripping further um, or from ripping again. This is just to put it back together and be as simple as possible. It gets, you can get any more complicated than you want from here. There's all sorts of hand sewing techniques uh, that are cute. You could do an X pattern. You can do a slanted, like these ones are kind of more slanted, but if you did them all slanted, that would be kind of an interesting look. This is another way for you to express yourself in the way that you've fixed your garments or whatever pillowcase. You can also put a patch on the outside and sew around the edges like this if you like that look. And you can also like weave with uh, embroidery thread, but that is a lot more complicated than this, and I'm not going to include it in this video. And I've only done very little of it myself. Uh, that's more like darning. Darning is very fun, but that's a sort of activity that takes time. You might do it for the television. This, we're just going to get this fixed in this little video, and you can go about your day. You, you can feel confident that your garment's gonna hold. See, I'll do a little bit of testing. Oh, okay, okay, look at the back. I did uh, pinch the fabric, so don't pull the fabric as you're sewing or you'll get this kind of bubbling, but it, it should not happen if you're not pulling. I did some tomfoolery as I was going, so. But you know, if it does bubble a little bit like this, you can just iron it back out and it should it should kind of work its way, depending on what kind of fabric you have. Fabric can be very malleable and it can it can uh, push back out. All right, so let's let's close this up. So if this was in red thread, yeah, you might see it a little bit, but it's, you know, by a quick glance of your eye, you, you would glance right over it. So here we are in the back, All right? And we're gonna close off. So what you want to do is go back through the last stitch that you did, like so, and then pull till you have a little loop like that, and then go through the loop. And then it ties a little knot right there, but that's only one knot, so you need to do that at least twice in the same spot to actually tie a knot.
and make sure that you go through the loop and not back. You need to go around and through like that. You'll know when it's not quite right. Just do it again. It's okay. All right. So then I have like, you can see there's like a little tiny loop there. It didn't um, quite get tight. So I'm gonna pull the two part and then boop, there you go. There you go. And then there's a little knot. If you feel like you need, you can do that a couple more times or however much until you feel like it's solid. Once is probably enough, but you know, twice is always better. And then you'll just snip this off right there at the base. And you are you can also put another layer of interface. You can put another layer of interfacing on this just to cover it up, uh, just to protect it from jostling or wear if you want, but otherwise that's it. It's all fixed, ready to go. Uh, unfortunately, it'll never quite look like it did, but at least you can continue wearing it, It'll continue, or it, you can turn the pillow over, or you, if it's a busy design, someone might not even see it in the pattern. So it's just a, a way to extend the life of your garments or your items. Feel free, if you want this to be more permanent, more strong, more long lasting, to do a lot more stitches, a lot closer together. Or you could, like I said, you can crisscross them for extra strength. Uh, go ahead and take, make this as hard or make it as easy as you want. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Let me know if you have any questions or if you want a different technique or anything like that in the comments or you can DM me.